growing up, I used to just love organizing things. Um, and there was just something about organizing and administration that I really loved. And after that, I was like, why not be a PA? But I think when I mentioned it to other people, they were like, why do you want to be a PA? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong with being PA? So I felt like at that time, they probably looked down on PAs. I don't know why. What's it actually like keeping somebody like me organized? Lord. <laughs> <laughs> with one of my clients, I was like, do you trust me? Like, do you like give me what I need so that I can do what I can do? When you've uh, had relationships that haven't worked out with clients, mm -hmm. like, why has that been? Of course you would bring up this question. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I wanted to start the year with something a little bit different and I've brought on somebody who's extremely important to me and that is my PA, Shanna. I wanted to start the year on this topic because for most of my life, the thing that held me back was being disorganized and the relationship I have with Shanna is very much so now why I am the man that I am today. And to be honest with you, the future that I'm going to have in front of me, I know Shanna and her team are going to play a massive role. So in this episode, you'll hear a little bit more around what it's like to have a PA, as well as a bit of advice around how you can become more organised yourself. Hey Shan, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. Yeah, I feel like I've been, well, I've wanted to get you on for quite a while, to be honest with you. Is but, it? <laughs> yeah, but you're, um, to be fair, when I spoke to Abby Sawyer about it, she, we wasn't convinced that you'd actually want to come on board. Because... You wasn't convinced? I wasn't convinced, yeah. Why? I'm, I'm not even too sure now, to be honest. That's interesting. But for the people listening and watching, could you introduce yourself, please? So my name is Shanna. I am the founder of Art Shanna & Co. Um, and I literally love helping people organise their lives. Yeah, you legit save, save lives as your, yes. as your bio says. <laughs> um, I, without a doubt, would not be able to survive without you. So I can say that from now. Of course. <laughs> um. So for today's episode, what we did want to do is talk about the experience of what it's like to be a PA, um, mm -hmm. but also for people that are interested in getting a PA as well, let them know a little bit more about that. So the first thing I want to start off with, oh, and by the way, these are questions that uh, Abby Soye, our producer, went and outsourced or got from people that were quite interested to hear okay. from me today. All right. So the first of those questions is, why did you become a PA? Mm. That's a good question. I think um, growing up, I used to just love organizing things. Um, and there was just something about organizing and administration that I really loved. And after that, I was like, why not be a PA? But I think when I mentioned it to other people, they were like, why do you want to be a PA? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong with being a PA? So I felt like at that time, they probably looked down on PAs. I don't know why. Um, but for whatever reason, because of my skills and because I was naturally good at it, I just kept on gravitating to be a PA, um, did admin in my church, also um, like volunteered and stuff. And then I was like, okay, this is something that I really love. So I might as well just continue. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I think because my skills matched and it was just something that was just natural, I just like launched I into it. into it because I believe when we first got to know each other, it was because you had reached out to me around supporting Dream Nation for yeah, to but do that events. was an event at the yeah. time. So your when that was your first business, right? Organizing events. Yeah. I don't didn't know you as a PA initially. Mm -hmm. So I had an events company called SA Events Limited, um, but at the time I also had PA clients on the side as well. Right. But I was more focused on the events because that like obviously much more exciting. Um, but yeah, I always intertwine both. So yeah. Okay, and do you still do the event business now? Yeah, so under Arc Channel and Co, we do events as well. Okay. But obviously, my main focus at the moment is administration, PA work. Excellent. And I guess in your case, what was it that actually made you reach out to me to be to ask about helping with events? Um, I think just bringing more awareness to my company. Uh, I've been to your events in the past as well. So I was like, oh, your events are really good. I would love to get involved. And I think at that time, I think you stopped doing events quite a bit. So I wanted to find out if you're going to um, do events again. And yeah, so I decided to reach out. And then thankfully you was, we had a conversation, which was really great. And we kind of went from there. Yeah, no, it was, um, at the time I had moved away from the old Dream Nation team. So mm. there used to be what, 20 of us back in the day. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of going through that bit of a transition of, going from that number to where we are now. And the whole of the events team was no longer part yeah. of the organization. So I wanted to do events. I wanted to bring back the gala especially, but with I had no idea how to do it. So yeah. you literally reached out at the perfect time. 
It was God. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So, but then could you tell the people, like, how did we transition from you just organizing our events or that event for us into the relationship that we have now? So I think after the first event, um, there was something in me that was just like, claw, like you're not good at responding to messages <laughs> or it just wasn't like flowing. And I was like, well, I feel like these are the areas that I could help with. Um, and then obviously you had a conversation with you. It was like, I feel like you need help with just managing, organizing things. Um, is this something that you're interested in? And obviously you said yes. Um, and it just went off the back of that, basically. Um, I can't remember because it was like many years ago <laughs> fully. Yeah. But yeah. And then we just started working like in that way, basically, which was really good. Um, I'll say from my side, it was, you're right, it's one of my biggest weaknesses for all of my career as mm. an entrepreneur or in any other area is I am crap at admin, like really bad. And it's, mm. it's probably a dyslexic thing. As yeah. as people know, I am dyslexic. So I, I used to have to have so many emails that were unresponded to. I had like invoices that were not sent or, and it was just making me look unprofessional and I can't stress enough how many opportunities are lost because of mm, being bad at admin. Yeah. Um, and I remember back at the time when I first took you on board, I couldn't afford you, like first and foremost. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah those were hard times. But um, even still, like I made that sacrifice to keep on, keep you on board because yeah. I was confident that it was going to be one of the best investments I could yeah. make. And I can say without a doubt, it easily has been all the things that I have now if I didn't have the support that yourself and your business um, provides for me, I would be nowhere near as successful as I am today. So, so thank you for, for getting my life together. Yeah, we appreciate the sacrifice though, because <laughs> we've had many conversations and I'm just like, I think me as a person, when I first started, I think our prices were quite low, quite affordable, but I think because I love what I do and I still wanted to see people win, I was like, let me just do this. And then eventually the price will go up um, because of the value as well that we provide. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the price has definitely gone up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but once again, because of, I guess, the foundations you've helped me to accomplish, it now means that we can make it work. So yeah. it's all good. What's it actually like keeping somebody like me organised? Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really fun, you know. It's fun. But with any job, I think it obviously can be quite stressful. I think it's stressful in the sense of we manage loads of people. I think we have probably around nine that we manage at the moment. And obviously we have a team that we manage as well. But I think because of the foundation and the team that supports me, it's quite easy. And for me, I love, mul like I'm easy at multitasking. So my brain is like everywhere. <laughs> so it's easy for me to manage someone else, uh, multiple people basically. And I think massively um, my team has supported so much. And I think without them, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I'm so grateful for them. But the systems that we have in place, so whether it's the meetings that we have on a Monday morning or a Tuesday or Thursday morning as well, whether it's the Telegram, WhatsApp groups and the Slack, all of that stuff that we have, I think those um, heavily help, help us to manage our clients. Yeah, so um, I think, when I started the role that I have now um, mm. with Impact and Urban Health, that's when we started to do month, like twice a week. We'll now meet quite early yeah. in the morning. So before I even start my my day job, like I'll just check in with you in the morning, make sure that there are no like clashes or anything yeah. that needs my attention. And it's kind of like for the most part, I can leave you to it, and everything else gets handled. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, like a lot of people want to know, like how do I manage to have a full time job? Yeah, run a you do a lot, and, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and the other stuff that I do, yeah. Um, and it really is because I haven't had to consider my diary myself for more than a year at this point. Yeah. Like even you'll even get to the point of you're planning my travel time. So yeah. I've got no excuse to be late. Um, or even more so if it's an impossible travel time because I need to be in two places too quickly, mm -hmm. you arrange like taxis or whatever it might yeah. be. So it really is just knowing that that side of my life is handled. Even my lunch breaks are like scheduled for me. Yeah, so, even though sometimes you don't take them, but they're there. Yeah, <laughs> they're there. They're in my diary at least. If it's, it's up to me if I choose yeah, to, exactly. to, to make myself suffer. Um, are there any other practical things that you would recommend people can think about if let's say they wanted to be a PA or mm -hmm. for somebody or they're an entrepreneur and they want to be more organized? Are there any other kind of strategies or tactics that people could think about or do? 
I think probably having one day where you can like do admin or focus on a, um, what you want to do for the day. So maybe maybe on the Sunday or the Saturday, whenever is best for you, planning out your week or the day be- the the night before. Basically, I think that kind of gets you ahead of the day. Um, and I think if someone wants to do administration or be a PA, I think it's about just organizing your time, um, getting whether it's volunteering, doing administration in that area. We take on a lot of um, interns as well, which is quite helpful and try and train them up as much as possible um, so that they can have the skills, whether it's time management, whether it's administration skills or social media, et cetera. Um, yeah. So you're saying that if somebody wanted to get a start, then doing an internship with you right now is an option? Uh, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> not right now, but with other companies, basically, I'm sure there's opportunities there available, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So obviously we've been PAs, that you've been my PA for a while, mm-hmm. but we've also built a friendship over the years. Yeah. Um, if you forced me to buy you stuff for Christmas and stuff like Christmas. that. Christmas, I don't even celebrate Christmas. No, so you're, you're so you're, funny, you no, mean my your birthday. birthday. <laughs> your birthday, not Christmas um, and things like that. But obviously our relationship's really great, but I know it's not always that easy with clients sometimes. Yeah. How have you been able to build like healthy relationships, not relationships, boundaries with your clients that you have? And it's funny because most of my clients are actually friends or people that I know. Um, I think when it comes to boundaries, I think obviously in terms of like the timing. So obviously we work Monday to Thursdays, nine to six, and we kind of stay within that. Um, I know that some clients try to push those, but we kind of like, you know what, it's not going to work. Um, but I think because there's certain things in place and they know that this is a professional relationship, but also a um, personal relationship. So we, there's just a way we just make it work. I don't know how to like describe it, but it just, we just make it work. Um, and obviously if there's any issues, I can like come to you or whoever it is and be like this is the issue can we resolve it we're very quick at resolving things which is quite good um yeah so do you find that or what do you do rather when people are trying to push those boundaries Mm -hmm. how how do you deal with that it's just about having a conversation if it even though it's difficult or can be hard at times it's just all about literally having a conversation and hoping for the best outcome um and I think because my clients know that I try my best to, like, I have a good heart um, and they know that I have a good heart. So anything that happens, it's like, I'm not trying to do it maliciously or anything like that, or they're not trying to, I don't think that they're trying to do it to me either. So it's just about, okay, this is what's happened. How can we resolve this basically yeah. and get to the other end? And if we can't resolve it, then at least we've, we've aired out what's going on and we kind of hopefully can move from there. And I think what you said around having a good heart is mm-hmm. probably the key, biggest key for me is... Yeah. Because things have gone wrong, like yeah. many things have gone wrong, which will happen when of you're course. working we're humans. for so long. <laughs> yeah, like you're humans, we've worked together for like how many years mm-hmm. and we're normally doing like high stakes and lots of stuff at the same time. So things will, things will go wrong. But the reason why this has worked is mm-hmm. because I have a hundred percent confidence that it's, if it happened, it's a genuine mistake. Yeah, It's not incompetence. It's not you being lazy. It's not you trying to sabotage, et cetera, like. So I think the character of somebody like yourself is mm-hmm. so key in that relationship. Yeah. Um, especially because I essentially have to let you into every aspect of my every life. Every aspect. And I think some people are quite scared of that as well. Because yeah. with one of my clients, I was like, do you trust me? Like, mm. <laughs> do you like give me what I need so that I can do what I can do? Yeah. And um, yeah, I think, of course, if you're sharing passwords, all of this stuff, of course, you're going to be a bit weary and, and um, be like, what's happening? But I think... The more that we show, you know what, we're here, we're behind you, we want you to win. Um, we appreciate you and value like the things that you're doing. And we obviously show that for our character. I think that's when you obviously can be more trusting of us yeah. um, and release what needs to be done. But obviously your business and everything you do is your baby. So yeah. of course you're going to be protective. Without a doubt. And I'd say even for me, like, yes, you're key to my business, but you do also, because my business takes up so much of my life, you are fully like integrated into yeah. so many elements of my personal life yeah. as well. So, because you literally can see my entire diary, you know exactly. where I am at any moment in time. Um, you can see basically every email that I've ever received. Uh, and you, now you've got cards to the company as well. Exactly. So. I'm not going to spend the money though, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, if, um, if someone's not able to have that level of trust in their mm. PA, then I feel like they're only going to get such a small benefit of the service in that yeah. regard. And obviously that comes with years. That comes with like trusting the person, letting go and seeing that, you know what, from my actions, I've shown that um, I want to support you. I've shown that you can trust me. So it makes obviously people more comfortable in that sense. So, yeah. How would you describe our working relationship? How would I describe it? Mm. Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would I describe the... Mm. 
I think it's a the relationship is like very friendly but also professional at the same time so even though the I feel like because of the person you are Claude I feel like it's easy to be like oh, you know what Claude today I'm not really feeling that great and you'll be like okay Shana what do you need and I'm like okay um maybe I can like take a break or maybe get someone else from my team to manage stuff etc cetera, etc cetera. I think because of that relationship it makes it easier to like want to work for you and want to support you so it's very friendly but also professional I don't know if that's the best way of describing it but I love our working relationship yeah and obviously like we said it's, it's taken time to get there yeah but what else could somebody do to build a good relationship with their with their PA or their client I think it's just um, getting to know them, knowing their likes, their dislikes, um, even down to like their love language and stuff like that. I think those stuff are really um, important. Um, and we have like, like almost like profiles on our clients in terms of like their restaurants that they want, they like to go to and different things like that. So that helps us to know people quite well. And having those conversations, like those meetings that we have allows me to understand the type of person that you are. Like, are you a morning person, not a morning person? I think those need to be considered in the relationship. Yeah. Um, and being, I guess, that willingness to change because, yeah. as you know, I did not start off as a morning person. Of course. Uh, <laughs> we had to kind of force that. Claude, you know you have to wake up early now. <laughs> yeah, that was a battle. So I think on, I was spoken about in previous episodes how now I have to be up from like four or five o'clock and it's 100% you that's, um, that's got us there. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the difference between a PA and a virtual assistant? Mm. And actually, would you call yourself a PA or virtual assistant, actually, in, in the relationship you have with me? So the relationship I have with you, I think it's more of a PA role, um, only because we. St- I think we started off the event side. So the difference between a PA and a VA is just like the PA is more hands-on, they come in person, they do things in person, whereas a, a VA is solely offline and they don't really do much in-person work. And it's interesting because... Even though we say we're a VA company, most of our clients we actually do in-person work for, which is quite interesting. But obviously when it comes to like in-person work, we obviously charge for like travel and stuff like that, most cases. Um, but yeah, I think that's the, um, the main difference is the VAs are um, online mostly and then obviously the PA do in-person work. Yeah, okay. When you've uh, had relationships that haven't worked out with clients, mm-hmm. like what, why has that been? Of course you would bring up this question. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that been? I think, I think sometimes um, people put PAs on like a high pedestal. Um, and I feel like if you haven't built that relationship or if you've done work yourself and you're just like, this is how I do it, et cetera. And it's very early in the relationship and you haven't given me time to like understand your business, understand how you work. Then I think that's sometimes where it kind of fails a bit. Um, but I think I try to, to tell the clients you know what this is what try to like update them as much as possible to be like this is what we can do this is when we're going to do it etc and also we're quite um flexible in communication so people can call me they can message me at any time and we kind of kind of get things going from there so it's because just the high expectations that were just there from the off- offset and because we didn't meet them so quickly it kind of broke down the relationship whereas they probably should have given us more time to understand them a little better yeah, um, cause I can say from my side, because I was just crap at it, I mm. had no, as long as you was better than me, yeah. uh, which was a low bar to cross, then uh, <laughs> you was always going to be fantastic. And not only have you been able to be better than I have been, you've taken this level that so I, mm. I would never imagine of being. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. If you are, please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. Don't forget to like this video as well. But going back to when it doesn't work, do you have any examples of, situations where so don't like obviously don't give names or anything yeah like that, but like I guess more the situations of this is why that didn't work out with this client um I already think of examples at the top of my head but I think it's more of the fact of they they've probably been doing the work for a long time and now handed it over to someone else and probably the standards is not as they would have expected yeah. um, but like I said you can't you have to give the person time to like understand the relationship, understand what you want them to do in order to, for them to meet that standards, basically. Um, and I feel like I go above and beyond for like almost all of my clients. I say almost all, all of my clients. <laughs> um, so when it feels as though, quote unquote, I'm not good enough, then it kind of makes me feel like, why am I stressing myself to do all of this stuff and you're not really appreciating it? Um, and I think once that, that side is crossed where I feel like I'm not good enough, then I'm just like, okay, this, this can't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think it's very easy for people to forget that you are very much so human as well. Exactly. And I feel like people actually forget. And some of my clients, it's just like, they're like, oh, why are you making mistakes? Or why are you doing this? I'm just like, clearly there's something going on with me that's allowing me to make those mistakes or there's just something happening. So maybe you should just like think more about what you're saying and how you're saying it to me. Mm. Um, but yeah, we always try to rectify if there's any mistakes and we don't make a lot of mistakes, no, just so you don't. know. You, you really don't. <laughs> we you don't. Really don't. Um, but we always try very quick on rectifying things. Um, even if, for example, someone even messaged me today and was like, oh, I don't think this person received this email. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. So obviously quickly called up one of my team members. Obviously I wasn't on my laptop and say, can you rectify this? Even though it's on Friday and we don't work on this day but mm. I just want to get things sorted as quick as possible so yeah, yeah. No, without a doubt and I think on that human side you you've got your own personal life you've yeah. got all the things that you you're you're doing for yourself what's it like managing both your own life and the life of somebody else it's interesting it's very interesting but I think because my life is already organized it's then easy for me to manage someone else's life but I think because of the systems like I said because of all the systems we have in place it's very easy um to just like slot in and be like okay I need to organize this I need to do this so it's very much routine now with majority of our clients because we've been working with some of our clients for a while now um so I think it's very much routine because I feel like sometimes my life can be a bit chaotic, but because my business is organized, it kind of makes it easy. Yeah. And obviously my team, like massively, my team helps so much. And I can literally be like calling them or be on um, Zoom call with them to get things up to speed or whatever it is basically. And they, thank God, and now I can take breaks because <laughs> I feel like before I didn't take much breaks before. So yeah. Yeah. So who is Shanna outside of being a PA? Who am I outside of being a PA? Um... It's interesting. That's an interesting question. I think I am a Christian, first and foremost. So I go to church and I worship God. Um, I am someone that loves like just relaxing and chilling. So it's funny because my I feel like my business is very like much really hectic, but I also like relaxing. But also at the same time, it's hard for me to pause sometimes and like not do anything. Like I like to be active um and doing things like that basically so i'll just say just so like a lover of life just love enjoying myself um relaxing yeah basically so the role of being a good pa mm -hmm. means that you in many ways you are serving people like in quite a direct way yeah is that a sacrifice for you oh very much so yeah very much so i think time sacrifice um yeah I feel like sometimes it because of how much I put into it it can have an effect on my body sometimes so I try to like obviously get massages and stuff like that to like de-stress also therapy and counseling has helped massively and obviously my support system whether it's my family and my friends so yeah yeah how have you been able to cultivate that the support around you like is there anything that you do in particular to make sure that you're being fed so that mm. or looked after so you can look after other people yeah I think because a lot of people pour into me so whenever there's like anything going wrong or just in general I can there's people that I can call up on and be like today's not a good day can you help can you support um can I meet up with you etc and people tend to like want to support and and help as much as possible and like I said my team really help as well so whether it's I need to take a break they do what they need to do and help things to keep running. Um, yeah. yeah. And so you've spoken about your team quite a few times in yeah. terms of like how much they've been supportive of mm -hmm. you. But I've also known that it hasn't always been easy yes. to build a team. <laughs> it definitely so hasn't. What, what's it like to be a leader and build your own company in that way? Um, I love it. I love working for myself. I love having people um, underneath me and also supporting me as well. Um, it can be an interesting dynamic sometimes. Sometimes when... I feel like I have very high standards, which is so funny. Um, but I have very high standards when it comes to admin and making sure that my clients are supported as much as possible. So, um, but I'm also like the human aspect. So if someone needs a break or someone needs to take time off, whatever it is, I'm always like supportive of that. Um, and also, yeah, it's really easy having that team behind me. Um, Cause like you said, it wasn't easy from the start. So we've had people that interned and et cetera. But once you find the right people and I believe we have the right people now, it's um, much easier to work with them basically. Okay. And obviously not everybody. So if you ask me to come and be a PA for you, apart mm -hmm. from the fact that I'm crap at admin, like, mm -hmm. but there are people who are potentially good or yeah. decent when it comes to being organized, et cetera. Do you have to take them through a lot of training or did you have to do training yourself even? 
Yeah, I think over the experience that I've had has provided a training. So like I said, I was doing admin before, whether it's in my church, whether it's, I did a placement year for uni. So it was a student and course assistant. So I was able to train up myself in that. Um, I also worked with a wedding company. So that's helped me massively um, in that area. Um, but yeah, so, training so is important. Like a, it was when you worked for the wedding company, was that you like almost doing an internship for yourself? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And do you still do things like weddings? Are you still involved in that industry or you moved away? No, weddings are too stressful for me. (laughs) (laughs) Weddings are way too stressful for me. I don't remember when I stopped, but yeah, they're way too stressful for me. Yeah. Fair enough. Do you ever come across people and say to yourself, this person really needs a PA? Uh, Yeah, I do. I do. I think from the example of you, um, but just in general, I do see people like, yeah, you need a PA. But I think sometimes it's very difficult in terms of like affordability and people being able to afford it. So I think that's when it's a bit difficult because people are like, I want a PA. Then when I tell them my price, sometimes they'll be like, "Mm, maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) It really is a chicken and egg from my point of view. Yeah. It's like, it's an investment you need to make to be able to make more money. Yeah. Because... I can say I reached my limits many, like maybe 25%, 20% of where we are now, maybe even less than that in all honesty. So it's kind of like, if I didn't have your support, I was never going to be able to make enough money to be able to afford you. But so that's why, like I said, up front, I had to make that sacrifice because I knew it was going to be worth it. And I think when I first started my business, it was quite easy for the clients that I was taking on because obviously our rates were quite low until we decided to pick it up again. Um, So... I would say that, um, yeah, I feel like you guys came in at the right time, yourself and also the people that I worked with at the beginning, they came in at the right time. So, yeah. Why would you say having a peer is actually important? We save your life. Literally, (laughs) we save your life and we help you massively. Um, I think even in terms of like income, being organized, um, just having someone that's in your corner, so knowing that someone's just there and, you know, I can call up on Shanna, Shanna can do this. Um, and I feel like I appreciate like the whole person as well. So making sure that my clients are happy, they're well, et cetera, et cetera, is quite helpful um, for them. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think the point you just said around knowing someone is in your corner. Yeah. That's game changing because, yeah, like I said, at one point I had a team of like 20 plus mm-hmm. people and then it went down to just me and mm-hmm. then, then it was just me and you. Yeah. And that, that was the reality for two three years pretty much like people had come in gone etc but knowing that you've always been there yeah and knowing that no matter basically what happens mm-hmm. like your your yourself your team your company is always going to be that backbone for me yeah it gives you so much confidence to be able to go out and try new things so yeah I it's a consistency I think someone even reminded me of that this week that is the fact that I'm, I've been consistent always showing up um yeah and I think people value that as well and they need it as well obviously it's as an entrepreneur, I can off, it's almost easy to justify that investment of get a PA because it's going to help me with my business. It's going to help me make more money in that regard. Mm-hmm. But I will say that's almost a limitation of just thinking what a PA can do for your life. Mm. At what sort of point do you think is just the level where people should be thinking maybe a PA might be a good investment for me? I think if you're feeling overwhelmed um, with the amount of things that you need to do, whether it's your business or your personal lives, then yeah, definitely consider a PA. Um, And even if you just want to be more organized. um, So I've had clients like that have been like one off. They're just like, Shana, just need to organize my life a bit. Um, And we'll literally just review their calendar, what they do on a day and then try and organize that. And then they literally go off and do what they want to do. They don't don't necessarily bring on a PA, but they just want to organize themselves a bit. So, yeah, if you're feeling overwhelmed um, or you just want to be a little more organized, then definitely consider getting a a PA or a VA. So, yeah. Okay. So even if like you had a a nine to five and that's all you're doing. Yeah. That's still. Yeah. We have clients that do have nine to fives um, and we just help them with their personal lives, whether it's. I need to organize um, insurance on my car or I need to get something picked up. Or we've had clients where they're like, Shana, I've got a delivery coming today. Can you come to my house and work from my house so that I can go to work, etc." We've done various different things. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you say has been the biggest transformation you've seen in a client? So before they started working with you, it like this. By the time they were done, they were like that. Hmm. I think the biggest transformation is 
I think you would be probably one of the biggest transformations. <laughs> <laughs> I think you definitely would be one of the biggest transformations. I think um, going from like not being as organized, because I think now you literally go in the inbox sometimes or respond to emails or stuff like that. Whereas before you would never like, oh, no, this is your area. You do what you're doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think you're probably one of them that is like, Shana, handle this basically and then I think now you've got to the stage you're like Shana actually can I can actually do this so you do what you need to do um and I think that's kind of helps in the sense of like taking breaks and stuff whereas before it's like oh my clients really need me I need to be here how can I take a break kind of thing but now that I have a team to support and do that and also some of my clients have like progressed in a way you know what Shana I can handle this so I can do this do what you need to do um I think that's what the change has been so them being even more organized than they was from the beginning um and, and it's funny I'll say on my side yes I've become better at like admin and the thing to that nature mm -hmm. but I realized I always had the ability mm -hmm. but what when you're overwhelmed with yeah. so many things you just don't have the headspace yeah so and it's also nice to know that I don't have to do it exactly so it's like great jump on do a few emails here respond to a few things here or i'm going to respond to this email because mm -hmm. this needs to be done right now and it needs yeah. my personal touch but the other 99 emails I can you do, do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um and i would say it's 100 percent made me a better entrepreneur better mm -hmm. executive in my day job and just an all-round just more organized person which i would say probably makes me a better human being to yeah. people in my life yeah definitely and I think the skills we have is like really invaluable so having those meet so most of my clients we have those regular meetings that we can like check in and see how things are going or progress with things and they really value just like I said having that person in their corner where you know I can call up on Shana I can message Shana and you know that things are going to get done when they need to get done so yeah I'll say for me as well having because part of our relationship I don't know if you like this with other clients but you do bully me a little bit um but in a good way because you bully me to get things done that yeah. are good for me yeah um because when you're your own boss you can very much so go without any accountability exactly. whatsoever like if I'm not going to respond to my invoices or whatever then so what but it's almost like you know that this is going to be good for me it's going to help me make more money it's going to make me look good or whatever yeah. so when there's a task like that that's been lingering for a while like you remind me almost every every yeah. other day until it gets daily, until it becomes almost hourly to the point I'm like, you know what, <laughs> let me just do it. <laughs> so yeah. I don't with you anymore. Accountability is so important though. And I, I love the fact that we can be accountable to our clients and get things done because in, at the end of the day, this is where you get your money from. This is where you kind of want to progress and meet your goals. Um, and most of my clients, when they do see my messages, it's like, oh my gosh, Shannon's messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that means you. I need to pull up my socks. <laughs> I need to do something. And I like that about um, the way we work and stuff because at the end of the day, if stuff are not being done, then you come back to us and you're frustrated at us because we haven't done what you want us to do. But I'm just like, but I've been waiting for you. Yeah. And I know that because our clients are doing 101 things, I have to be on your case. I have to be calling your phone. And you've been looking at, some of my clients, I called them like more than once throughout the day. And sometimes when I call them, I'm like, I'm so sorry for calling you again, but I had to call you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, without a doubt. And I am grateful that for that accountability. Like I think in general, accountability sucks. Nobody likes the experience of it, but mm. the results that it brings is is, is life changing. Exactly. So probably moving on to the last question for me now is: you've been doing this for a while, and I know you have certain dreams and aspirations. But mm. for those that don't know, what does career progression as a PA look like? So um, some people might actually just start off as a PA and like not actually have a business, but then obviously you can progress into a business like mine. And also you have, obviously you can have a team behind you that's supporting you. So whether you training them to become a PAs or hiring other VAs under your company, I think that's quite important. I would love to for my business to get to a point where it runs on its own and I'm like sitting down and be like, okay, yeah, this is great. <laughs> um, and probably even maybe um, doing another business or organizing other things um, I think that would be quite helpful uh, yeah and just also bringing on more clients and supporting more people yeah yeah so in essence the future if you want to take PA in as is that even a term PA in <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take being a personal assistant to the next level then you do need to begin to think like an entrepreneur yourself yeah. and with that said then because you work with so many entrepreneurs do you learn anything from them yeah some of them the way they work um how they how they even write emails themselves because obviously I'm good at writing emails but then some of the way they word it and stuff is quite interesting I'm like okay this is interesting might take this for myself so even in that sense um 
and even just like the many different businesses that they run and the, the way that they think I think that's definitely something that's helped in running my own business as well okay if you had to give a piece of advice to let's say firstly a struggling entrepreneur and then somebody that wanted to go into be a PA what would mm-hmm. that be um I would say get as much training as possible um, if you want to be a PA um, and like internships were, are definitely important if there's any that are out there for you and I think anybody that's like struggling as an entrepreneur invest in a PA definitely um, it can it can also be like I don't know maybe your friend can help out for a time and obviously if they can't fully do that for you then obviously you then hire someone else um, there's places like um, Upwork Fiverr that offer services like this as well um, and obviously our company as well if you want to work with us we're happy to bring you on board so yeah where can they find out about your business so our website site is arkshannerandco.uk <laughs> <laughs> all right then thank you so much for being on here today Shanna. thank and, you for having me but more so than being on the podcast for legit midi change in my life we appreciate you claude <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to today's episode we release a new episode every sunday so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out if you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode then check out the recommendation above don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast this is claude williams you've been watching behind the dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next dream nation event